Hey guys, welcome back to Day to Day Chess. This is Sabina, and here's the plan of the week. Um, so far, we have seen a wrap up of the London Chess Classic with a brilliant win by Magnus Carlsen in the last round of the event against uh, Alexander Grishuk. Then we looked at Mikhail Botvinnik's win against Andor Lilienthal and yesterday the brilliant, brilliant, wonderful game between Tigran Petrosian and Anatoly Banik. For today, it was the day that I told you I will be choosing a game from the Carlos Torre Memorial, which started today. And I went for round two of the event, choosing the game between Alexei Drev against Leon Okendo Jorge. I really hope you're going to enjoy um, today's game. Aside from that, don't forget, tomorrow the European Blitz Chess Championship is starting, so be sure to check out the games if you're interested in it, and it's definitely a really strong event of the year. The next day we will have the Rapid Chess Championship, and so in these next two days I'm going to probably make a compilation um, of some tactics that people have missed or have not missed, um, or end games, depending on which of the two is going to be more prominent and I would find more interesting for you guys. And of course on Sunday, is Season Up Sunday, so I'm sure you're going to be looking forward to day, that day as well, and then we'll continue this way. I think it's really cool because everybody keeps on track and people can check out the games that they feel more um, interested about. Uh, besides all of these wonderful games that I hope you are enjoying, please do not forget to check out my web blog, daytodaycookingofagrandmaster.com. I'm trying my best um, to post a recipe every single day. Sometimes it takes some time until I post it or I might not be able to post it, but um, definitely it gets updated period periodically, so you definitely want to check it out. Alrighty, let's start with the game between Alexei Drev and Leon Okendo Jorge. And we see a Nimzovic. We haven't seen Nimzovic uh, being played for a long time. And um, in this um, uh, variation, uh, what Black normally does is, of course, they give away the center. It's quite obvious. But then they find a way to counterattack the center. And they are really different ways for black to do so. One of them is d5, so basically getting um, a kind of uh, queen's gambit or a Cambridge Springs with c6 and queen a5. Some people like to counterattack the center with c5, whether they castle first or play c5 the next move. And then other people like to play in this position knight c6, and then um, this bishop is going to be given for the knight eventually, and then d6, e5 is going to be played. So black is trying to get rid of the dark square bishop and then put their pawns on dark squares like that. Um, you know, the fact that he doesn't have that much um, space is not going to be that visible, um, specifically for the bishop, let's say. Knight f3, of course we have to defend the pawn in d4. D6, and as you can see, Black's choice was to play this line with D6, E5. Finishing up the development, and this move is um, is really good in a way, because um, what White does is they want to play A3, but they don't want to play A3 and allow Black to take in C6 anyways. They want to give away the bishop, and then after um, Queen takes um, C3, there might be some knight e4 coming, and then f5 sometimes. This is something that, that happens sometimes, or white castles, and then at some point um, they're going to be playing e5. And So what white does is they put the bishop in d2 because they want to capture back with the bishop in case that capture is happening, and they want their queen to still control e4 so that they can prepare to play e4 themselves. Okay, so we have a castle, a3, takes, takes, good. Now, white can also be thinking of some b4 to get more space on the queen side because this is the side of the board that they have more space on for the moment, right? Queen e7. 
actually I was a little bit um let's say surprised by this move in general um black tries to play a5 first to make sure um you know white won't be playing before and um in general white can be thinking of playing a3 here or a4 one of the two either one is a good move here for white in this position but um black went, went queen e7 and um alexei drev didn't go for b4 he thought you know let me just try to be quiet make sure i'm finishing up the development and let my opponent weaken let's see what type of plan he wants to do so he just went for e3 we have many choices as we go along specifically in um, when we're playing d4 the first move uh, white has a lot of plans and it's just a matter of what you prefer to play in that particular day maybe he didn't feel in such a an attacking move uh mode and prefer to play just quietly for the moment a5 of course not allowing b4 bishop e2 why not bishop d3 well because at some point when black is going to play e5 e4 might be a threat so we're better off just developing the bishop in e2 to avoid any e5 e4s good black went for a4 to make sure um it's kind of blocking the structure on the queen side because now anytime you'll be pushing the pawn black will take en passant queen takes and the a3 pawn will remain weak so if i just try to demonstrate that for you here on the board queen takes this pawn will remain isolated on the a file so we really don't want to um weaken our pawn structure so why doesn't do anything about that pawn for the moment let's not forget yes you are blockading my um, pawn structure on the queen side but in the same time you're putting your pawn in a4 which is you know attack he kept um attacked by my queen in c2 so you will have to maintain either your rook on the a file to defend it or put your bishop in d7 move the knight to make sure Whichever one of these two pieces is going to stay protect that pawn, otherwise you're going to lose it. And we know what happens when we lose material. <laughs> we might lose more later on, and you know, eventually we are going to lose the game. So we definitely don't want to do that. Good. Now, why does not hurry to make any castle? First place 92. And I remember I played something similar myself at some point, something like this, um, just that my opponent uh had already played e5 and had the bishop in g4 and um i still play knight e2 that was the idea of this move well first we are kind of avoiding any future bishop g4 to try to um trade some piece as i mentioned earlier to you black doesn't have that much space so trading pieces is really a, something they want to do um and this is one idea and another idea is to help push eventually some e4 so we want to be ready a little bit and the same time we have some ideas with bishop f3 so there are many opportunities for white in this position e5 was black's choice and he has to i mean if he doesn't try to push a pawn in the center how is he going to develop the bishop in c8 how is he going to actually do something he's really he seems to be really passive and his knights don't really have anything to do currently so black is really trying to open up the position good do we open it of course not we are going for the space d5 knight b8 and uh, finally white castle in this position and um, black went for bishop d7 which uh, would not be my first choice for black in this position in fact and i think it was played also before knight d7 seems more appropriate because the knight okay was developed and it needs to be brought to a better position and what better position than the c5 square which has been weakened once uh white pushed d5 so we pushed d5 we got more space but in the same time we gave away the square c5 pretty much forever because anytime we will be playing b4 here comes the en passant. So this would have been 
a really good uh, move for black that probably would lead to some equal position. Knight c5 is the next move. You won't be able to play e4, and if you do, there'll be some pressure there. The bishop will be developed in d7 only afterwards to make sure that pawn gets even more protected, and so on and so forth. But black went for bishop d7, and I feel that in this position, white starts getting their advantage because um, that knight should have come to c5 first. Okay, let's see. f4 going for the attack and notice the reason the knight in d7 was good as well was because you know any kind of f4 and some trades could happen the knight could get the active 3 5 as well so it's really important to be careful which piece we're developing first and if you're not sure um think of the principles of chess in general you're like maybe 98 percent of the time you are developing the knights before the bishops um even if your knight has already been developed and then chased back from the starting position you still most of the time develop that knight first because for the bishops it's really not clear what is the best spot to develop them so that's why you're hanging on to them a little bit longer now black at this position could have thought of maybe developing the knight via a6 to come to c5 but i believe we can take and um, maybe white can think of doubling on the f file now you might ask me okay but what would be the difference if the knight would have been in d7 well let's just go back for a second and see after knight d7 if white plays f4 here we can take okay and um, well obviously we cannot take back and we're going to lose this pawn why isn't the same thing happening in the game it did happen in the game e takes f4 but now rook e1 okay and after rook e1 white is actually like just gave away the pawn for a second because now is going to utilize his pieces to actually utilize the bad placement of the queen in e7 and then on the e file and so now after queen takes e3 check king h1 so white technically gave away two pawns but he's uh close to winning here because th the pieces are just going to come so fast this knight in f6 is going to be captured event i mean quite soon uh triple the pawns on the f file um this one for sure is going to fall very fast but how is black going to defend once this knight goes away that h7 pawn that is the question and so in this game black went rook e8 knight f3 drev is not hurrying to do anything crazy he's defending his rook in e1 super well right with the knight and the bishop so that he can threaten to play bishop d3 chase this queen away look at h7 um will eventually capture in f6 h6 bishop takes g takes bishop d3 i mean just look at this beautiful way the game is about to get finished queen b6 i mean where else to move the queen right okay trading rooks bishop takes queen d2 and i want to just go back just one more second to show you why um the things would have been differently if the knight would have been in d7 so just going back remember i was telling you why would play um f4 now we would take so why can't why just play the same thing as it happened in the game because now black captures in e3 and compared to the game now this knight is protecting f6 you see and so it doesn't matter that the rook opened and the bishop opened that knight is protecting so nothing will really come out of that capture in f6 that's something that you have to always be careful for so um in the game of course you know that was not possible because had black um captured in e3 we would have seen most likely some sacrifice of this genre bishop take uh, rook takes f6 
and uh, well if you take here queen takes i believe and uh, i think you see why you cannot take here because after bishop d3 the mate is coming what to do you have to move the queen right okay queen h6 you cannot push the pawn because there's mate in g7 let's not forget i have two bishops and really there's no way for black to protect the mate it's going to be maximum three moves i believe a mate here so this was the difference between the two be very careful of all your pieces specifically around the king and always stay aware of how your opponent might weaken up your king because it always happens and i think this is really a, a very nice game that shows that and of course there is like i said earlier there is some rating difference between the two players but that's not the most important factor when a game is being decided it's just some understanding of specific positions and some little you know things that we might miss okay so the rooks were traded now and look at poor black with his terrible pawn structure around the king and his terrible pieces on the eighth rank really really bad the queen also is on the other side of the board and white is really um ready to checkmate black very soon queen e2 with tempo but in the same time what did i put queen e2 i'm so sorry not queen e2 queen d2 um queen e2 <laughs> was a possible move too but uh, i believe after queen e3 uh black might be able to get saved but queen d2 was the game the move played in the game because now uh, i wanted to show this but i messed up queen e3 now we have a really good move and i hope you see it instantaneously because it's not very hard rookie one and trade intermediate move first um king g7 now knight takes d2 and white is winning so that's why queen d2 is a really really important move um knight d7 okay thank you very much well, i'm getting my pawn back well one of them right i need to get another one and then a little mate oh wait i can take him b2 thank you very much yeah you can but i don't really care about that pawn look at these pieces i've got my bishop my queen is coming what do you do here knight f8 seems to be the right defense here but don't worry i have two extra pieces i don't just need my queen and bishop because obviously i i probably couldn't do much just with them so i'm bringing my knight looking forward to a nice mate either in e7 or g7 Bishop d7 was black's response, h3. Quiet! I'm not in a hurry with white. Your king is going to stay terrible that way forever. It's a weakness that remains, rook e8. And here, um, Alexei Drev played bishop f5, trading the only piece that's stopping white from getting ready to mate. Rook e5, queen takes f6, very simple simple chess and after rook takes f5 i mean really it's so tough for for black to even find defenses here anymore simply rook takes f5 my queen is protected and um let's say black could have thought of giving a last check before resigning but after this check we can just go rook f1 and we have an exchange up and mate is coming so this was the game that I had prepared for you guys today. I really hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to stay tuned for the tournament and check out the games. Um, the Carlos Torre Memorial. Um, and that's all I have for you guys. I will be seeing you tomorrow. Have a wonderful evening. Bye.